Hi guys, this is Scribbly again with another pen review and today we're going to have a look at a special edition fountain pen from Pelican and the particular pen that we're going to look at right here is the M101N Grey Blue Special Edition Fountain Pen. This uh, model series here, the M101N, re-releases so to speak, is like a, a rebirth or re-release of a, a fountain pen that Pelican has made in the 1930s, which was the 101N. These pens right here, modern interpretations of that pen, are inspired by those 1930, 1930s colors, as well as like the size and shape and overall design of the pen. This here is like the fifth or so installment uh, of this M101N. I think the last one was released in 2017. It was called Bright Red and on Scribbly.org, on my website and on my YouTube channel, you will find a review of that one as well. This here is the 2019 installment, a very nice uh, sort of vintage color, of course, as well, the gray blue. And we're going to check that pen out in a minute. Thanks a lot, I wanna say right here to Joost at applebombpennen.com in the Netherlands for helping me out with this pen so that I could review it. The pen comes in a gigantic package, as you can see in comparison to the pen, or my hand with a Pelican logo on top saying uh, 101 and 1937. Maybe that's like sort of like, you know, it was the 30s when uh, they originally made the 101 N's EF for extra fine. Open up. Uh, that outer white sleeve and out comes a, another gigantic box with vintage packing, packaging, the old Pelican Ford Chick logo, Pelican Schutzmarke, which means trademark, saying Pelican Günther Wagner, Hannover und Wien. You slide out this massive box here and I'm now not going to through all the content and packaging in detail because like, you know, it's essentially the same booklet and four leather pouch that you get with any Pelican pen uh, saying right here, gray blue or grau blau in German, M101 NEF. And nice thing is that you get a beautiful vintage labeled bottle of Pelican Tinte, one the 4001 Royal Blue Königsblau, 62.5 milliliters of ink. That should last for a while. I mean, uh, Iroshi Suku bottle, I think has 50 milliliters. So that here is actually quite a bit of ink. Right, guys, let's check out the pen itself. Here it is, the M1 run, M101N in gray blue. Yeah, it's the classic 101, Pelican 101N design. Uh, pen right here. Smallish pen overall. Let's start from top to bottom. We have a quite large upper part of the cap right here that has a black engraved Pelican logo right here. It's a bit hard to see in this camera light and it's also a bit hard to see in real life because it's just so dark, it's black. Then it says Pelican right here on top of the clip. Germany on the backside. You then have a teardrop shaped clip that does flare out. It's equally useful than all the other Pelican pens. I have one right here from for comparison, just that it's not like the Pelican, you know, bill-shaped clip right here, but it is actually more of a teardrop shape. We then have two cap bands, palladium plated, the whole pen, the accents, then of course the star of the show right here, the barrel, with this fantastic pearlescent marbling cellulose acetate barrel in gray and blue. The gray almost has hints of silver in there. And depending on how you angle the pen into the light, 
just looks really, really beautiful. It's a piston filling fountain pen. We have the piston turning knob back here with some knurling there on the piston turning knob. Also looks cool, looks vintagey. And those elements, cap and piston turning knob right here are black. The pen does unscrew with under one turn. Half a turn only, half a turn only, half to three quarters of a turn. I love that because that makes it a super fast note taker. And then the pen lays really nice and comfy in the hand. It is a smallish pen and I'm going to do like a few size comparisons for you to see in a bit. But I mean, a pen that un uh, uncaps with one turn, that's just like sort of a dream for me. We then have like a black section right here that is about the size of a uh, uh, M200 section, I would say. I'm going to compare it to the M400 that I've shown you in a uh, right now in a second. We then have a 14 karat gold nib here that is rhodium plated. It says Pelican 585, 14 karat or 14 karat EF4 extra fine. This is, of course, not the uh, nib decoration or imprint that you and now right here we already have the pen so look at the section right here i would say it's about the same section diameter maybe the m400 is a tad wider but i would say it's about the same uh back to the nib as said it's not the regular modern imprints that we have in the m400s and so forth but it is um let me put the m400 away right here it is like this the vintage nibs that you uh, imprints that you do find on the original vintage nibs as well. We then have like a super cool massive ink window, which is super cool because um, you can see the ink level right here very well. Demonstrate that for you. Ink level about here at the moment. Maybe a bit tricky to see in the light, but I guess in this angle here, you can really see it. One thing that's a little bit of a pity is like that my pen already has developed some micro scratches right here. I guess you can see it especially right here. Um, also up there. I mean, you may say that it just adds to the vintage flavor of the pen. And of course, you know, you see it good right here. Of course, a pen is something that is meant to be used. So I don't mind all that much, but hey, the pen costs like 500 euro and i don't know if it's necessary to already have micro scratches right here it of course does have to do with the capping and uncapping of the cap i don't know if one could have designed that somehow differently made the inside maybe a little bit smooth the tolerance is slightly different so that that touching plastic on plastic doesn't happen in a way that you end up with micro scratches <coughs> excuse me i just find it a tad annoying especially reconsidering the price range of the pen but well it is what it is it's a quite dark pen it's not deep scratches i cannot even feel them with my fingernail as said on a dark pen you can't really see them so i guess in the end it's all good length of the pen as said it's a kind of smallish pen but it's an excellent short pocket pen i'm gonna go get back to that in a second as well i have quite large hands i would say but the pen still kind of comfortable in my hands and then you can post it it does post very safe very secure and then you have like a more than full size pen in actually very good length i rarely post this pen guys i mostly write it unposted let's do a few size comparisons and i do start just as always making a size comparison to my standard size reference pen which is the lamy 2000 eh, lamy 2000 the lamy safari of course and seeing that picture right here guys you already see what i meant when i said that this is a kind of smallish pen but then uncapped you'll also find that it's actually not that small because now it's just like about half a centimeter or so shorter than a Lamy Safari. And I'm not going to post the Lamy Safari right here because I would personally never post a pen. Uh, it becomes quite long and unwieldy, I think, when posted. But if I post that little M101N right here, it becomes actually quite a biggie. Let's have a Another size comparison to a few other Pelican pens. I think you might be interested in that. 
that's what the M101N looks like in comparison to a M400 capped. Here we have a M800 capped. And here we have a M1000 capped. That's what it looks like. As said, it is an excellent short pocket pen. Why? The M400 already is a fantastic short pocket pen. And uh, now the M101N, if it would sit in a short pocket, would sit right here, right? And you see it becomes even about a centimeter shorter, which is fantastic because you can basically carry that pen in any short pocket, even if the pocket isn't that deep. Uncap those two. This is the, sorry, it was a bit clo too close. So this is what it looks like, uh, M400, a tad longer. Uh, the nib, I'm not sure if it's exactly the same nib. They look very, very similar. It may be that the nib design or that the nib shape is a little bit different, but if so, it's the difference is so minimal that you almost can't see it with the bare eye. I find they're like very, very similar. Um, just to a quick size comparison to the M800 uncapped as well. So you see that in case it's useful to you once I have those pens around. So that's what it looks like. And then just because we're already at it, M1000. That's what it looks like. I started talking about price before we do a writing sample. Last but not least, let me talk price real quick. This pen costs 500 euro. If you don't opt for an extra fine nib, if you opt for an extra fine nib, it sets you back 45 euros more. That's like 545. Guys, I'm not lying. I really, really like that pen, but I think 500 euro is quite a thing to ask for this pen. That's quite a word. Um, let's put it into perspective here just a little bit. Um, the pen price wise lays exactly in between an M1000 and an M800. I think you get an M800 at Appleboom, for instance, for 440, 450 euro. I think you get the M1000, this model here, the classic green one for like 550. So 450, 550, this one here with 500 lays smack in the middle. An M400, which is basically, you know, the same pen in size and, and length and diameter and 14 karat gold nib and all that, costs 280 euro. That's not exactly half, but sort of half of what that pen costs, like, right? I mean, for that pen, you could get any of those or two of those, so to speak. So I think that puts it into perspective a little bit, saying... It's quite a mouthful, even though the opulent packaging and, and, and the ink bottle and all that. But it is definitely a really, really nice pen. But I guess it won't be for everyone price-wise. Let's do a writing sample, last but not least, with this fantastic Pelican nib. I'm going to write it unposted because I always write this pen unposted. Um, here we go. Pelican M101 M101 N Gray Blue Extra Fine Nib. This nib is quite a nail. There's not a lot of, uh, you know, bounce or whatever to it. It is very, very smooth as most Pelican nibs are. It has a tad of feedback. I overall, I don't know how it is for you guys, but like I overall feel that like those rhodium, fully rhodium plated or coated nibs always write a little bit more feedbacky than those dual tone nibs. But um, that, that being said, that nib sort of writes with a tad of feedback 
that lets you know you're riding. It's by no means uncomfortable. This is Rhodia paper, as you can see. Wetness, medium wet. It's an extra fine nib as well. It has the Royal Blue, the 4000, uh, 4001 Royal Blue Pelican ink inside. Uh, just so that you see how this extra fine nib here actually writes, I'll do a quick comparison to a M805 nib, uh, extra fine as well. And an M400 fine nib right here. Looking at this, I would say it's a pretty true extra fine, pretty comparable to an M805 extra fine nib as well. And then the M400 here, the fine nib. Uh, you see that it's a little bit wider because it's a fine, not an extra fine. So Pelican uh, is known, <coughs> excuse me, for having not the most consistent nibs. But in this example here, actually consistency is pretty high. We arrived at the end of this review, my friends. Uh, here we have it, the M1, M101N Difficult World uh, word, Gray Blue, Joost at applebohmpennen.com. Thank you very much for providing this pen for review. Guy, guys, I hope this review was helpful to you. As said, I think it's a fantastic pen, just price-wise, quite, quite a strain otherwise really a beauty. As said again, I hope this review was useful to you and I'll see you at the next review. Ciao, ciao.